Hi folks and welcome to another video. Now in my last video I was in uh, Snowdonia National Park doing some landscape photography with a large format camera. If you haven't seen that video I'll put a link in the description below so please go and check that one out. But in this video what I thought I'd do is go through the process that I'm using to take those large format negatives and get them into a digital format so I can process them in Lightroom. Uh, the technique that I'm using to do this is pretty simple, it's just using a light box and my digital camera with a macro lens to take a close-up image of that negative and then using a bit of software I reverse and colour correct the image so I can uh, work on it in Lightroom. So without further ado let's go and uh, go through the whole process. So the basis of this rig then is um, a light source, in this case an LED light pad and a platform for the negative to sit on. Now the reason why I built this platform was through uh, depth of field issues. I was finding that if the negative was directly on the light pad, in some cases the pattern of the LED matrix was showing through in the final images. By lifting the negative away from the light source, that problem was eliminated. I'm using some masks that are just created out of uh, artist board here. And they serve a couple of purposes. One is to block out any uh, stray light from causing uh, lens flare. And the other is to keep the negative from touching the surface of the platform, which can lead to issues with Newton rings, which can be very difficult to get rid of in post. Now the lens I'm using for this is a vintage Carl Zeiss 50mm uh, f2.8 lens. Um, it works really nicely here because it's got very little uh, barrel distortion, so when you're doing multiple images and lining them up and doing a, a panoramic merge, any sort of geometric distortion makes that process more difficult, so this lens is working really well for this. Now if I was digitising a medium format negative I'd be using an extension tube with this lens, uh, but because these negatives are so much larger I can get away without the extension tube and I will typically take two images and stitch those together. I don't see any benefit to creating ultra high resolution scans of these images for the for the way I'm sharing them. So it's just two frames to cover the, the whole negative area. It still produces an image with over 30 megapixels which is plenty big enough to make even fairly large prints from. In terms of camera settings I stop the lens down to f11 and I shoot in manual exposure mode using the lowest native ISO that the camera has and keep the histogram in the midpoint to make sure I've got all the tonal range in the negative well covered. So the next step is to get these images uh, stitched together. So the way I normally do this is uh, to select all of the images in the set, right click and go to photo merge and panorama. Now depending on the alignment of the images sometimes it can help to use a boundary warp just to square everything off it just makes cropping it later a little bit easier so I'll go ahead and merge that and this sometimes can take quite a while so I'll jump straight to the finished merged image okay so now we've got the stitched image the next step is to reverse and color correct this image now there's a plugin that I'm using for this which is called uh, negative lab pro it's an excellent plugin, it really does a fantastic job with the uh, colour negatives so I'll put a link in the description where you can go and check that out and there's plenty of videos on YouTube with more detailed tutorials on how to install it and how to use it. Now the first step in this process is to sample the orange film base of the colour negative and remove it and we do that with the uh, white balance picker and that's the reason why I've left part of the film base in the picture to be able to sample it later. After sampling the negative film base the next step is to crop the borders and the film mask out of this because that will cause problems if you don't do that because it thinks the well, those black areas are part of the image which obviously they're not in this case. So I'll just crop all of that out of it and then if I load the plugin I'll leave the colour model set at Frontier and pre-saturation at 3, that's fine for this. So next step, let's convert this negative. So there we are. Now it's already done a, a pretty good job here. I could apply some corrections here. 
what I like to do is just get to a point where I've got a reasonable amount of colour information in both highlights and shadows here. And then what I will do is create a TIFF copy of this. So now I've got my TIFF copy of this image created, I can then use Lightroom to do any final processing I need to do on this. Typically you wouldn't need to do a huge amount, maybe just uh, contrast corrections, but the most likely thing to do is to use the spot healing brush to remove any dust or marks on the negative. So there we go, that's a brief introduction to the process I'm using to get my colour negatives into digital format. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully found it informative. If you want to keep up to date with the videos I'm putting out, please consider subscribing to my channel and hopefully see you in the next one.